Hello folks, this is Lolo Kono back again at you. We are going to be making something really tasty that I have purchased at local restaurants, but it's very expensive. <laughs> they are called smash burgers. Now, a smash burger is where you take the, the actual hamburger here, you um, kind of take your hands and mold it into a circle, or like a, like a ball, and you stick it in the fry pan, and then you smash it with the spatula, as thin as you possibly can. And then you just let it sit on two minutes on each side. Then uh, you can, of course, uh, season it any way you like. We're going to be making some bacon, cheddar cheese, and uh, smash burgers tonight. So this is going to be awesome. I also have some ballpark everything burger buns. Brand new product, never seen that before, so I'm really excited about that. No high fructose corn syrup, folks. And uh, it's about the lowest calorie bun I could find, closest to a keto bun. And we're going to be buttering up these buns and putting these on the, uh, in the fry pan with some of this garlic, parmesan, and basil seasoned butter, which is gonna make the buns really taste good. And we're also gonna deep fry some crinkle cut potatoes here for some french fries. So stay tuned everybody, I'm going to get the, uh, the fry pan over here hot. We're going to start making some smash burgers, y'all. Alright my friends, we're going to start off by putting this delicious pepper smoked bacon in a microwave. And you're probably thinking, why would you microwave bacon? Well, let me tell you what, this little bacon rack uh, gadget that I have here helps to cook this bacon to perfection. After about six minutes in here, I flip them over for another minute and it's crispy and brown and delicious. And the nice thing is, it doesn't spread you know, grease all over the place and it doesn't smell up the house. Even though I love the smell of bacon, it's just easier in the microwave and I can cook other things uh, on the stove. Okay. I'm gonna put it in the microwave and you're probably thinking, Lola Connell, dang, did you ever clean that microwave? Well, of course I did. <laughs> After, of course, I uh, put the bacon here, I'm gonna clean it out again. I actually kind of wiped it out before I put this in here. So, I'm gonna go ahead and close that up. We have three slices of bacon for four. I usually do six minutes, but for three, I'm just gonna go ahead and press five. We're gonna go ahead and let that start to cook. All right, my friends, the bacon has been cooked. This only took four minutes and 30 seconds. You can do it a little bit shorter, maybe four minutes. I like mine extra crispy. Probably thinking, oh my, that looks burnt. Well, no, not in my book. So that's for me. Um, I think it turned out just fine. Again, you can do it for maybe three and a half, four minutes. And I didn't have to turn it over. So if you put more slices of bacon in the microwave on one of these, uh, one of these pans, you're definitely going to be adding some more time. Like I said, with uh, four to six slices, it would be like five minutes, then flip them over and then do another one to two minutes. But for just these two here, it took less than five minutes. Alrighty, we've got the burger here. This is Angus Burger. It's not Wog you. I wish it was, but Lola Connell ain't rich. <laughs> but this is the next best thing. I got. Christmas, I'd say about close to, yeah, about two pounds for about seven bucks. Not too bad in this economy right now. And I added some of my favorite uh, McCormick brand seasonings here. I've got the garlic and onion, black pepper, and sea salt. I put some of the McCormick Grill Mates hamburger seasoning in there. Some cracked black peppercorns and some McCormick minced onion. So I've got that here. I'm going to I'm going to mix that up with my hands and we're going to make some nice round balls out of it and we're going to, I'm going to show you a little hack on how I smash them. Okay everyone, I put all of the uh, ingredients in there and I mix it up very, very well. Now, I've got a plastic gallon bag here, Ziploc, and I have my smash burger ball here and what I do is I just fold this over like so and I just start to squish it. Okay, start to squish it out. Really get it as flat as I possibly can. And that's how 
Lolo Kano makes his smash burger. Look at that. I'm really getting smashed down good. And look at it. It's perfectly made. And it's ready for the frying pan. And I'm going to use the big skill tonight. The cast iron. We're just going to pound that down. I'm going to put about three of them in and cook them up. Alright, I've just got two big smash burgers frying up right now and some butter. Yeah, I did about a quarter stick in there. You can really smell the seasonings and spices coming out that I mixed up in the burger. It smells so good. Alright, we'll put them over here in just a second. Alright my friends, I have just flipped them over. I have about two minutes on one side. And then you flip them over and I kind of smash a little bit again. People think, oh, you're taking out all the good, good grease. No, it seals up and caramelizes on that uh, on that first side while it's uh, while it's cooking. So it's and of course the butter will also uh, soak itself into the meat, and it's going to taste my you Smash it down a little bit. Listen to that sizzle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is going to be really, really tasty. All right, I added some Cash Valley, some Utah special made right here in Utah. Got the creamy medium cheddar cheese. So I've got a couple slices on there, and we're letting that melt. Boy, is this smelling good. All right, next, folks, we're going to go ahead and fry some up some yellow onions. Now, I love the, the purple Spanish ones, but usually you want to eat those you know, raw because we're using. These become the better onion for grilling or sauteing. So we're putting that in a, you know, about a tablespoon of butter and we're going to go ahead and caramelize those babies for the top of our hamburgers over there. Alrighty y'all, check that out. Nice and caramelized. And boy, do they really smell good. Again, those will be going on those smash burgers there here in just a few minutes. Next stop. We're going to go ahead and toast up these uh, everything buns. And then, last of all, we're going to deep fry up some crinkle cut fries for our accompaniment to this delicious smash burger. Okay, folks, I have now got the crown on the hill all buttered up with this delicious seasoned butter that I had purchased. Put those in here for oh, about, a, about a minute. And I'll flip them over and just barely brown the other side. And then we'll take a look and see how it all turned out. Okay, let's flip these babies over. Oh, look at that. Wow. Now that looks really, really good. Again, it's got some Parmesan cheese mixed in with that butter, so that's why we're getting that nice toasty look. Woo! That is going to be some tasty little there. Okay, friends, it's time to put these french fries into this hot oil. And everyone, I always use extra virgin olive oil to, to deep fry anything that I make. And I'll tell you why. First of all, it's heart healthy. Okay, it's rich in taste, tastes delicious. People say, oh, it's going to make stuff bitter. No, that's not true. It really does a very good job. I would never, ever use canola, vegetable, corn, any of that types of oils anymore. It's all GMO and processed and it's really bad and it will clog up your arteries. I am several pounds overweight, which is not good, and I'm an older fella, <laughs> close to pushing 60, but because I've, I have ingested olive oil for like 30 plus years, I have no artery problems. Matter of fact, they did a scan of my arteries and they say they're like baby arteries. Pretty amazing. The doctor asked, How did you do that? Well, there's my answer right there. So, there's my little, uh, my little, uh, health preach in there. <laughs> so, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add some of these crinkle cuts here to this hot oil. Depending on the size of your family, you might want to have a bigger pot. But I like the, the smaller and the taller. Seems like I can cook a lot more in there than versus having a big, a big pan which takes up a lot more oil. And I like to make sure 
that the fries are completely and totally immersed in the oil because that way it'll all cook evenly. So there you go. We're just gonna we're just gonna go ahead and deep fry that for about well, about three minutes until it's golden brown. I like mine a little like I said a little over, little cooked, not overcooked, but uh, I like them to where they're crispy enough so they stay crispy when you when you bite them. I love that crunch. So we're just going to let that sit there and fry it here for a few minutes. All right, friends. I have just pulled the French fries out. I like my fries seasoned. And again, I go to my go-to here, my favorite McCormick brand, all-purpose seasoning, the Arctic onion, black pepper, and sea salt. So I go ahead and I just kind of shake a little bit on here. Squeeze it out while it's still hot. It still has some of the oil present in the fries. So I put that on now. Well, has got a little bit of arthritis in the knees, so I like to add a little bit of ground turmeric. I get this from the Asian food store. You'd probably get it at Walmart or maybe some other stores, but I like the, the good organic brand that actually comes from Asia. And then, finally, I put on some of this delicious garlic Parmesan seasoning. Kind of gives a little bit of a kick, a little bit of cheese uh, taste in there. Okay, there you go. Got the fries up. Now it's time to stack this burger. Let's go for it. All right, folks, got my buns here. We're gonna go ahead and dress this baby up. We're gonna put a little bit of mayo on here on the, the wheel. I'm gonna do this with one hand as I hold my iPad. Not an easy thing. I do have a tripod. I'm just being too lazy. I just gotta get that thing out and do it, don't I? Okay, I love spicy brown mustard. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little, whoop, a little bit of that on. Of course, classic tomato ketchup. I always buy the organic. It's about the same price as the stuff in it, and it doesn't have white sugar in it, which I do not like. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and get our burgers and bacon. Let me go ahead and put that first burger on. Split a piece of bacon in two. Put that on, crisscross, take a little bit of the onions, and add that on, and then another one of our smash burgers, put that down, again, take the bacon, crisscross it, oh, there we go, and let's put on the rest of those things there, a little bit more, and Sauteing that in the bacon grease. Mm -mm, good boy. Very tasty. Okay, now, next of all, we're going to throw in a couple of uh, my favorite sandwich stuffer bread and butter slices of pickles. You can add tomatoes if you like. For me, I figured there's just enough tomato in that to catch it. One nice big old piece of lettuce. I buy the green meat, it's already been washed and packaged. Uh, it's about the same price as if you were to buy the the uh, you know the cut leaf for the romaine where you had to do it yourself. So why not just make it convenient? So there you go. All right, let's put this crown on top for the crowning of our smash burger. Check that out, yo! Mm -mm -mm, I can't wait. I'm gonna go ahead and plate all this. Sorry for my finger getting in front of the camera, but like I said, I'm just trying to hold all this together. Let's put the fries on that plate and plate it and take our final look. Okay, my friends, there you have it. Everything's been plated. Our seasoned fries, a little bit of ketchup on the side. And this comes up to probably around, I'm going to say close to, oh, maybe a thousand calories, maybe 1,200. Um, I do try to do strictly as much as I can with low carb. Of course, the, the fries aren't very, very low carb, but other things that I eat to help me lose weight. I've lost over 20 pounds. I, I do intermittent fasting, eat a couple of small fruit plates during the day, and I have my big dinner, and I drink lots of water with my Bubba cup, and also I like to drink bubbly sparkling water. 
has a little bit of taste of pineapple. They also have watermelon and some other, I think, like raspberry. Zero calories, zero sugar, and none of that nasty uh, sugar substitute either, which is not really good for you. So there you go, folks. Thank you for tuning in to Lolo Kano's Cooking Adventure channel today. Sure appreciate it. It's been fun being with you this evening. Thank you so much for everything that you do and for subscribing and hitting that notification button. Promise I'll keep you entertained throughout the years. And remember, take care of those who you love and take care of yourself. And also always remember that life is an adventure.